Hi, everyone, and welcome to episode four of the Open Source Podcast. Today is Thursday, October 26th. My name is Jeremy Hess, Community Manager at Cloudify. Today, we have a great panel and guest host with us to discuss bare metal OpenStack for data backup and disaster recovery. As I'm sure our listeners are aware, the OpenStack Summit in Sydney is coming up next week, and we thought this would be a great topic for an episode. So first I'll introduce Steven Spector, digital cloud marketer, the social Merlin, business strategist and OpenStack enthusiast. Welcome Steven, please introduce yourself. Well, thanks. And just so everyone knows, I will continue my quest to add more titles as soon as I can, because you can never have enough titles. But uh, thanks for having me on. And, you know, I'm here to, uh, I view my roles, kind of ask the questions that our listeners may be be wondering as we go through the topic. And so uh, hopefully I'll ask the questions you were afraid to ask. I think that's a book or a movie or something. But thanks for having me. Yeah, good to have you on. Okay. And so our Two other esteemed guests are Nick Smirnov, CEO and founder of Highstacks, and Denise Baim, Senior Marketing Manager at Host Telecom. So Nick, why don't you uh, introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about what you do. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, hi everyone, so my name is Nick Smirnov, CEO of Highstacks. So I'm doing data recovery and disaster recovery for the whole my conscious life, like doing disaster recovery to AWS and to OpenStack. And so I think it's a great idea of using OpenStack. So, and if you have any kind of questions, please feel free to ask and I'll be glad to tell you how, how, how to do migration and how to do disaster recovery to OpenStack. Thank you. Great, and Denise, go ahead and uh, let us know a little bit about yourself. Hi, yeah, as you said, I work at Host Telecom, um, their senior marketing manager in the US. Um, I've been involved with open source, um, starting with Linux since 2001 and later in, into OpenStack. And I really do enjoy working in the open source community and um, really like to really like to see what's going on technically and how people are promoting it. As for our side, um, we are data hosting infrastructure and we run OpenStack on bare metal and we employ the fabulous services of um, Nikolai Smirnov at Highstacks offering his disaster recovery data backup and migration op, um, paths on our, in our data center. Great. All right, so uh, Stephen, you are the guest host, the first guest host we've ever had. Uh So why don't you go ahead and, yeah, that's what what we should do. (laughs) Why don't you go ahead and start us off and feel free to, uh, you know, ask questions or just get the conversation started. Sure. So I I think what we'll do is, you know, most of the time when I think of OpenStack and storage, I think I immediately jumped into Swift or you start thinking about Ceph. And so I thought, you know, before we jump into the details, It'd be interesting uh, to hear from uh, Nick and Denise a little bit about more of what their, why customers are looking to use their type of services and what the value of running on OpenStack is. So Denise, I'll start with you and and tell me a little bit about why disaster recover and data backup and those kind of services um, are important for your customers and how OpenStack really uh, delivers that. Yeah, I think anybody, whether they're a one-person business or an enormous enterprise, needs extremely sound um, data backup and data recovery. And we've seen more of this and been more aware of it lately, especially um, with the malware that's been going around that has affected even large companies like FedEx and, and LG, where their data has been lost to them. And can a company really afford to lose their data or even for a day, for a week, how long does it take to get it back? And to make sure that they have um, good, not just good data backup, but infrastructure backup in in case of catastrophe. And the reason that we um, are interested and really promote OpenStack is because it's a platform that is obviously open and gives people a little bit, well, not a little bit, gives them a lot more flexibility and um, options 
to do and add things to their data infrastructure that they need to run their business. And with failovers into OpenStack, even if you're running, um, even if you're running from another platform, by enabling a backup system that runs in OpenStack on bare metal, people have access that's immediate and um, and seamless. And so that's really what we're interested in providing and hoping that that makes it more people feel comfortable move, moving into an OpenStack environment. So thanks, Denise. So Nick, you know, your, your company, HiStacks, it's H-Y-S-T-A-X, is quite interesting and, and you call it uh, D-R-A-A-S, Disaster Recovery as a Service. I assume that is the name since everything has to be as a service. So can you talk a little bit about um, how you built your disaster recovery service on OpenStack? Um, did you, was there certain pieces of the technology leveraged all of it? Um, a little bit details would be interesting. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. First of all, I would like to tell that uh, I love OpenStack very much. My first experience with OpenStack was about like three years ago. We used it as a, a development platform for DevOps and testing and staging. So, and I, one day I noticed that it's pretty complex to migrate uh, compute to migrate images to OpenStack. So, and I, I was wondering why it's so difficult because the platform is so cute and it's so difficult to use VMware to, in, in infrastructure. So, and I was wondering how we can do, and I was enthusiastic in terms of how, how, how we can do migration to OpenStack. And uh, so uh, we thought about that with uh, my colleagues and we came up to some kind of draft of the solution of how we can do that and how we can leverage OpenStack. So, and we built this, uh, this solution. So it consists of, let's say, two parts. One is a server side, which is like installed on OpenStack side, on the DR side. And one is small, which is like uh, on a customer side, we deploy like small uh, Linux agent, which like replicates VMware, take deltas and send them to OpenStack. So it's, it's pretty simple on a customer side, but on an OpenStack side, like all the, all the meat, all the brain is an OpenStack side. So where we store like all the deltas in an object storage it can be, as you said, it can be Ceph, it can be Swift, it can be a, a, any type of object storage. And when customer needs to do a failover or we want to do a failover, we just uh, boot uh, machines on OpenStack directly from this object storage. So we like do uh, iSCSI targets to an object storage and we boot machines directly from the storage. Doing things like changing hypervisor like P2V, V2V on fly like directly and we are able to boot uh, machines on OpenStack which were previously uh, on VMware. So this this is how, how it works briefly. So. It, if you want to ask any, any specific questions, just feel free. Well, thank you. So, you know, we're going to get back to Denise, but before the, the other piece of the solution that, that you have built is the, you know, the idea that if I'm running in VMware and I actually um, can do, I guess it's a live migration of the virtual machine over to OpenStack. Is that, is that Nick, the right way to look at it? It's, um, I would say it's real time migration. So it's yes. a process of migration when uh, you, do need, uh, you don't need to switch off or turn off your production environment until the time you are ready to spin up it on OpenStack. So the, all the replication process is going in the background without influencing uh, production workloads. And also you can test uh, to do some test migration in the same time without influencing your production. So your production is still running on VMware, but at the same time you can spin up a test migration in a isolated OpenStack project, test how the migration works, like to do some configuration and things like that. And only when you are ready to switch to a new site, at this time, you just need some, some kind of downtime to, to just to switch to an OpenStack. So it's a real time process. So it's, it's, not, it's not about taking VM and just to do live migration without stopping, but all the process. So the time of, uh, so the downtime is like minimum. It's like minutes. 
to switch over. So, so Denise, when you when when host telecom is talking to customers, um, I mean, I guess the value is if I'm running a large uh, private cloud VMware, and I'm looking to you know not just back up my data, but what I find interesting is that your company is saying, well, you know, your migration should the whole VMware hit a problem pops up on OpenStack and is available to you. Can you talk a little bit about you know, your customers and, and the value to them that, that this offers? Yeah, so I think what we combine with um, the amazing services that Nikolai and his company create is that when you do that failover, you do end up in a bare metal OpenStack environment and the value of that is that our engineers in the data infrastructure system work with you to make sure that you're always on, that that infrastructure is optimized to handle your workloads, and that we have real-time communication so that when you are running an OpenStack in the background, even though you may not see that you're um, in OpenStack in the background, that everything works exactly the way you want it to with um, all the compute and power that, that we deliver. So, and, and we really want customers not just to run in OpenStack on the back, in the background, but we really want customers to be able to switch to OpenStack if they're not already using it so that they can continue to build their infrastructure in an open source environment that they're able to um, optimize and bring in other solutions that their company may want to pursue as, as they grow. And that's especially important, I think, for small, medium business. It's not that it's not important for the enterprise, it obviously is, but I think that for SMBs that, I, from all the research that I've done, they're, they're much slower to move to the cloud. Um, and the benefits for them are exactly the same as they would be in an enterprise and they need the data recovery and or the infrastructure recovery and the data backup that, that, the, big, that the big enterprise does. And they need to know how secure it is and how much they can gain in that type of environment. So that's really what we're trying to enable and trying to educate our customers about. And so Denise, when we, when we talk about OpenStack and, and obviously you chose OpenStack um, specifically, can you talk to um, maybe why OpenStack was the choice for host telecom in, in, um, as setting up your solution? Yeah, I, well, we actually got our start in OpenStack working with Mirantis, and Mirantis needed test labs to really um, test their um, their infrastructure or their, their solutions in a production environment. So Host Telecom created that test environment on actual metal that showed the developers how their code worked in real time and in a real production environment. Um, and the reason we really chose OpenStack is because, because it is open source, because we're able to do more with it, because we're able to enable users to do all the things with OpenStack that you, and, and not get tied down with, let's say, license fees for VMware as a company scales. And the, the, those fees are really exorbitant. We want people to be able to scale as they grow in a natural way and to be able to keep growing. And OpenStack really provides that and commercial platforms don't. And, you know, why, why, um, why hobble yourself with a commercial solution that's not developing just for you when you can be in OpenStack and develop systems or work with other applications that other OpenStack developers have used? to to really grow your business. So Nick, I'd like to come back on your solution a little bit. And can you offer a little bit more um, in, insight into how the actual migration works? I know you mentioned that on the client side, I assume there's gonna have to be some sort of um, 
I don't know the right word. I don't want to say application, but there's some little piece of code running. And it, is it actually sending over as our actions occur? Um, you know, every time someone does something, it's sending data across um, to track it. So you kind of get that, you know, each step or can you provide a little bit more insight to how that works? Not too detailed, but enough to give us a basic idea. Yeah, sure. So uh, from the replication side, it works in the following way. So we uh, deploy a Linux VM to each of the ASXi hosts, to each of the hosts on VMware. And what this uh, small VM does, it does call a standard VMware snapshotting mechanism, which does uh, VMware snapshots. And this agent uh, retrieves deltas from uh, these snapshots and send these deltas to the DR side, to another side. So we are not doing it by any type of action. We're doing it by schedule. Let's say every five minutes or every three minutes or like uh, one after another, one, one replication was done, we start another one. So it's done by, by schedule. So we retrieve these deltas. We send them to the DR site, to another site where we have OpenStack. And on that site, this data is stored immutable in, in, in an object storage until the time we need to do a failover. So until we don't have a customer doesn't have any kind of disaster, we do not change anything in, in data. So when we need to do a failover, the, let's imagine customer has a disaster or customer wants to check how, how disaster recovery solution actually works. So just, just to be sure that if, if customer has a disaster, he has like a stable version he can spin up or he can fail over from. So uh, at that time we do uh, create like a SCSI disk to object storage. We do a V2V transformation for the machine. So we do change like, let's say drivers. We do, we want to be sure that network adapters would be in the same slots uh, they were for VMware because like if we use KVM on OpenStack and how uh, VMware, Hypervisor, how ESX uh, read network settings, how K KVM, which is not the same, we want to be sure that we don't mismatch any network settings. So we do this in a P2V or V2V process. And after that, we just call uh, OpenStack uh, Nova API to boot machines. So we boot machines from the certain disks, which were already prepared by doing P2V to them. And all the processes go in, in an orchestrated manner. We understand that it's not just, let's say customer had like 100 machines. It's not just to start 100 machines at once. We, we need to be cautious about what customer has and like customer can have databases and clients. So we need to understand that there are dependencies between components. So we do it in an orchestrated manner and we use heat templates to do orchestration. So we use a heat project for that. So that's actually how it is. Well, thanks a lot. And uh, for those of you who want even more details on this, um, if you go over to HiStacks, uh, high, high it's H-Y-S-T-A-X.com, uh, you can get more information. I think it's interesting technology. It's been a long time since I looked at that. Um, before we wrap up, I just want to um, go back to Denise one last time. Denise, uh, Host Telecom is going to be a sponsor and the first time ever at the OpenStack Summit Sydney. Can you just give us a couple points about what's going to happen down there for your company and you know, for our listeners, I encourage you to go over and say hi to Denise and uh, let them know you listen to the podcast that the Cloudify is doing, which we're very appreciative. And thanks to Jeremy and uh, just offer some uh, quick tips of what they should look for and, and when to stop by. Yeah. So um, we're really excited to officially join the OpenStack community at the summit. And I hope people who are in Sydney will stop by and talk to us um, about a lot of things, including um, OpenStack on bare metal. And also we are giving two presentations, Nikolai um, and one of our guys, uh, Seba Weiner, will be doing a presentation on all the things that um, Nikolai has been talking about during the podcast and the, um, and the, and the infrastructure that those solutions are running on. 
and I am giving a presentation on creating object storage architecture that will scale and some of the interactions between the hardware platform and Swift, which was specifically what I'll be um, addressing, and how to make sure you really create that architecture that will scale even when you reach a high capacity, because sometimes just adding a, another server to a cluster doesn't cut it. Um, the architecture needs to be built from the ground up to, um, to really accommodate that kind of growth in a in the most um, in the most rapid way possible and in a way that really grows. So, and we're going to be out and about talking to people, um, talking about what they're doing with OpenStack, not just you know what we're doing. We're really curious to interview some people in the community and um, find out what's going on out there and let let people know about it. And I, I think we're going to have a great time. So hope people will join us at our presentations and um, and enjoy the summit and be there and learn a lot. I'm looking forward to it. So Jeremy, I, I think I'm going to hand this back to you. And thank you for letting me invade as a guest host today on the Cloudify podcast. And um, unfortunately, I will not be in the summit in Sydney, but I will be watching from afar. So uh, we, if you we, are- we tried, to, we tried to take you, Stephen. <laughs> Stephen resisted every inch of the way. He's like, I'm not going to- that's a, long, that's a long print, plane ride and boats take too long to get there, I think. But- I think uh, you should suffer with me, that's what I think. <laughs> so Jeremy, let me hand it over. And, and again, thank you for letting, uh, and thank you, I'll just say as well to Denise and Nick for joining us. Great. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks so much, everybody. Really appreciate your time. And I'm sure there's a lot more to say on these topics. So I hope that in the future we can revisit this maybe at the next, you know, around the time of the next summit and uh, we can catch up and see what else has changed. So thank you both very much for your time and uh, have a, a good day. Thanks very much. Thank you very much.